Now to help us focus on the fundamentals behind the technicals and take a look at some financial markets as well. I've got Paul Nolte joining a senior wealth advisor at, and market strategist, I should say, at Worth Murphy Selvis Wealth Management. Paul, good to have you with us this Monday morning. Sorry, I sometimes speak a little faster than the mind works, right? But uh, I wanted to get your thoughts real quick on this Bitcoin move lower before we talk currencies and treasury and currencies and treasuries and, and what was behind some of the selling yes on Friday. Yeah, you know, when you take a look at Bitcoin, we've looked at it as kind of a correlation with the NASDAQ market. And it kind of has hmm. followed that in over time. And what we're looking at now, I think, is some of that speculative activity coming off. And yes, the NASDAQ did very well last week. We're seeing uh, kind of a flat market here to start the week. But I think when your investors are starting to look at it, they're taking a look now at Again, taking some speculation off the table, starting to rotate to other parts of the market. Value's done a little bit better. Small caps have at least perked up here a little bit. So I think Bitcoin is really the poster child for speculative activity. Again, it's not one that we really follow super closely because, again, no earnings, no revenue. It is a, a speculative vehicle in our, in our view. So it is by that weakness that we've seen, as you've highlighted since early June, that's where we're starting to see it. Had my dog out at the uh, out of the woods over the weekend, and I, coming down the trail, I heard a, guy, a couple guys talking about Bitcoin, and one of the guys said basically exactly what you just said, Paul. He was like, "Look, this stuff." He goes, "I don't even understand it. I can't explain it. Why it goes up?" He goes, "I don't even trade this anymore." He was like, "I tried, and now I just stay away from it." Talk to me a little bit about Paul this week, and uh, are we going to see any uh, tipping of the scales in terms of rates? Right, pretty comfortable around this four and a quarter level here. I've got the ten-year four point two nine just above it for three. Uh, any uh, insight, any clarity? You know, it's going to be interesting because you look at the, the short end, obviously, it's nailed to the floor. Uh, and But that the intermediate, the 10-year uh, yields have been extremely volatile here. Uh, we've seen it go from 450 to 470, back down to 450, and then up again, all within a, uh, the course of six weeks. So I think what we're going to see in the, in the rate market is Again, it's going to be very dependent. I don't think on inflation. We get the inflation numbers later this week. They're starting to come down. They're slowly getting to that 2% level. I think it's really more on the economics. And I think you're going to hear Chair Powell talk and get quizzed pretty hard on the economics. We're seeing the unemployment rate tick up here a little bit. It is now comfortably above a 10-month moving average at 4.1%. First time we've seen it over 4 now for quite some time. We're seeing weakness in the manufacturing. That's been ongoing. But services flipped lower. The ISM uh, flipped below 50. So we're seeing some economic weakness in, in a variety of areas. I think that is the, the key for the Fed. If we start to see that unemployment number really start to tick higher and get some momentum to the upside, we're seeing revisions negative over the last couple months. That, I think, is what's going to move the Fed. I don't think it's going to be on the inflation numbers. And that's where I think Congress is going to focus on is the economic weakness. And that's what Powell is going to be, uh, I think, addressing over the next couple of days. Paul, economic weakness. Uh, we were talking about it in our last block. Data beats few and far between for the most part as of recent, right, of the last six, six weeks or so. Does this sort of mixed activity, though, kind of feed into more of kind of just wait and see? Fed's on hold in July, but ultimately expectations for that set cut uh, continue to hold high up around 70, 75 percent? Yeah, you know, it's, it's been tough calling the Fed. Uh, you know, when you sure look has. at the numbers, uh, it's hard to justify as we sit today with the numbers where they are to say, yes, the Fed should cut. So, yes, I would agree that July is off the table. September is a wait and see. Okay. All of the all of the meetings to this point have been wait and see. Yeah. So I I think if we do get that weakness, and for us it's really the unemployment numbers, the weekly jobless claims okay. numbers, they've been tracking 2018 to 2019, 2017. So again, looking at that part of the market, okay. 
But again, I think it's really going to be the unemployment numbers, and we'll get a couple more reads before we get to the September meeting. Yeah, 2018 area, I feel like, is really that fine line below 200,000. Imagine what that would do in terms of uh, rates ultimately and Fed rate cut expectations that would push some of those back. And then if we were to see those jobless numbers on a weekly basis spike above 250, for example, you know, that would raise some concerns also, I think, and probably uh, increase expectations of those rate cuts from Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Let's talk about the U.S. dollar right now, which, as I've been arguing for a while, has had a very level-headed approach towards all of this, but maybe more so recently uh, being influenced by some of the foreign currencies across the big pond, Paul. Yeah, you know, with the election now in France, Japan is a mess. The dollar's been very, very strong against Japan. But when you take a look at Europe with the recent elections and some of the shifting that we're seeing politically, um, you know, the safe haven trade now has been the dollar. And again, the counter to that has been gold. And gold has come off right. here recently. It really rallied hard last week, but it's taken some of that back. And it's been kind of the off and on again, a uh, counter to the dollar. We like the dollar here. We think the dollar remains relatively strong as long as rates stay here. That could change if Powell starts to change his tune and we start to get a more economic weakness and maybe a rate cut becomes much more in our wheelhouse. If we do get that cut, remember that the Fed is very unlikely to cut once and be done. It's going to be the beginning of a series of cuts and how much and how long is, is still very much up in the air. That will factor into the dollar. I think really rates here uh, is gonna be a driver for the dollar. All right, Paul, you're giving us lots to keep an eye on in terms of financial markets. We appreciate your time, on, your time on this Monday morning and sharing part of it with us here on the Schwab Network. Paul Nolte, Senior Wealth Advisor and Market Strategist at Murphy Salvis Wealth Management. See, when you slow down, it does work.